Hey, before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to give you a little heads up. I accidentally recorded a book that I had already published as an episode in this podcast, but since I'm reviewing the second book in the series, I'm just going to leave it in here and you'll hear the first book and the second book of this series being reviewed back to back. And then I have some exciting news about the future of this podcast. Thanks for listening. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 74, Void Wraith, The Void Wraith Saga, Book 2, by Chris Fox. Destroyer, The Void Wraith Saga, Book 1, by Chris Fox. This book was a ton of fun and I can't wait for more. It's military science fiction, but it's easily the most entertaining military science fiction I've ever read. I haven't read much because I find they're usually boring books. This story just moved, and it was very fun and engaging. There were no scenes where characters were sitting around and talking and pondering philosophical or political things like I've read in other military science fiction. There were no abstruse, complicated sentences about the technology, no expounding on what this future science could realistically be, and I appreciated that. Everything was described well, so I understood how the science worked, but the story wasn't about the science. It was about the adventures and conflicts which in my opinion makes for a much more enjoyable read. Instead, I got a ton of awesome action scenes. I got a behind-closed-doors meeting scene where terrible secrets were discovered by eavesdropping good guys. I got some really cool science fiction-style Indiana Jones scenes where characters flew to planets and explored ancient ruins to try and uncover some terrifying mysteries about an alien race. One thing that makes a book a favorite to me is when I don't get bored reading it, and that was the case with this book. It was fantastic. Even though it had great world-building, interesting technologies, and super cool alien races I loved, I don't remember ever getting assaulted with a huge info dump to tell me all about it. As you get to see these alien races and human characters go through all kinds of trials, you discover more about them and the technology around them. I particularly liked the Tigris. They are a cat-like alien race that reminded me of the Kilrathi from one of my favorite old space fighting video games, Wing Commander. I loved how the movement of their tails was often used to show their mood. These aliens are cunning and intelligent, but they are also vicious, brutal fighters with an amazing amount of strength. Their sharp claws and teeth were scary. I loved how human characters thought that they were creepy when they smiled. They came across as terrifying warriors, which was cool. It also made for a fun juxtaposition when these Tigris characters were happy and would sometimes purr. I love that and thought it was awesome. There are two ancient alien races. They were really great too, but I'm not explaining them because I don't want to spoil anything in the story. I also liked how the Helios gates worked for long-distance space travel. They were a cool idea that were well executed. I loved how all of the characters were ones that I've never met before, but they had a ton of interesting backstory. Just enough was given for me to know their motivations and appreciate them as well-rounded, fleshed-out characters with a history. I would say the story focuses more on plot and character, but the author did a great job creating living, breathing characters that I enjoyed going on adventures with. I am excited to learn more about them by reading the prequel, Exiled. I would say that this novel was like Wing Commander meets Indiana Jones. It was a whole heck of a lot of fun, and you should go buy it right now 
so you can get to reading it. I know I'm glad I picked up this one. And as soon as I'm done writing this review, I'm gonna go read the prequel. I can't wait for the sequel to come out. Void Wraith, The Void Wraith Saga, Book 2, by Chris Fox. This book reads like a breeze, and yet it's chocked full of awesome stuff. Political intrigue, amazing action scenes, really cool alien races, space battles, a super creepy, mysterious antagonist, and so much more. I really enjoyed getting to spend more time with the characters from the first couple books and meeting new ones. Nolan gains new skills in this book, and it was awesome getting to see him grow and use them. Dreiker provides a formidable military leader in this book, and my respect for him grew a lot from the last book. Annie, a human from the prequel novel, comes back to help in a big way in this story, and I really enjoyed getting to know her more. <laughs> She's a kick in the pants. Fizzgig, the amazing tigress, was awesome as ever, and I really enjoyed seeing her a lot in this novel. There were tons of other awesome characters too, like a bionic soldier. He was awesome in the firefight scenes. This book had amazing mission-style action scenes, where the characters had to go into battle to recover items. These scenes were intense and awesome, but they were also used well to build up the characters. I really enjoyed getting to see the character Annie again in this book, especially in combat situations. Her dialogue and actions cracked me up and gave me respect for her. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of her weapon. All of the characters in this book were great, from the amazing Tigress cat aliens to well-rendered tough characters like the military veteran Annie. Chris Fox really pulled it off on this novel. There was an awesome claw-to-claw -claw fight scene between two of the Tigress main characters. I loved getting to see more into the culture of this cat race of aliens. It was also cool seeing more of the primo alien race. As the story unfolds, you get to see humans, Tigress, and Primo all interacting in ways that go against how they've related to each other throughout all of history up to this point, and that was really cool. The last act of the story was done really well. The tension just kept building. The characters kept finding themselves in situations where it seemed like there was no way for them to succeed in the battle, let alone the war. The climax of the story was fantastic. An amazing fight that took a lot of brawn and brains. I'm not going to spoil it by saying everyone made it out alive or who won, but man, it was an amazingly fun scene to read. Chris Fox is a talented author, and the stuff he came up with also shows how creative he is. This story rocked. In conclusion, this was a very satisfying novel that made me laugh a lot. It had tons of amazing action and character interaction that made for one heck of a read. I flew through this book. I'm sad I finished it because I wanted it to keep going. The ending was a great conclusion to the story that built up, and it sets up the third book nicely. I'm hungry to read it. Luckily, I know how productive the author has been writing the first two and a half books in the series, so I know we won't have that long to wait. I can't wait for the next one. The stakes are high. It should prove to be another amazing ride. Okay, so this episode is a bit different than usual because since it's been literally years since I recorded episodes for this podcast until the last episode we did, I accidentally started this episode and even put it out before replacing it with this file that you're listening to now by reviewing the first book in the series, Destroyer by Chris Fox, 
And so I'm just going to put these two together so you can have a refresher of the first book with my review in it, even though I already reviewed that in like episode 30 something. I'm putting it at the beginning and then playing this one. So there's the first two books in that series. I'm sure you can hear from my enthusiasm in my reviews that I really liked them and I highly recommend them. So now that I've inserted this new audio into the original episode 74, I will let the rest of this episode play on. You'll hear me talking a little bit more about the first book in the series, but it's the same thing I would say about the second. All right. Awesome. Yes, I remember really liking this book and the other books. Chris Fox is a really talented author. Um, if you happen to be an author like me also, he has amazing YouTube videos that you can go check out where he shows you the process he goes through to outline and to write a book. And he's done projects where you get to kind of sit over his shoulder as he writes a book. Um, he has all kinds of motivational videos about how to get your butt in the chair and tons of really great, super helpful stuff. Uh, very insightful guy, Chris Fox. But more importantly for this uh, book review, a really great writer. I just really love the balance that he has with moving the story forward. Like I said, it never got dull and there was a great richness to the characters, the world, and yet the story just moves, which makes it so much fun to read. He just does all of the things very well. And so I highly recommend any of his books. He has some with werewolves. He has lots of different genres. Uh, right now he's writing a, a funny book that should be a fun adventure that will also make you laugh. So there's something for everyone. If you want to go check out Chris Fox and just look at the different genres he writes in, I'm sure whatever you pick up by this guy will be amazing. But one of my loves is uh, science fiction. And it's funny, I still feel like I haven't read a ton of science fiction, even though it's probably my favorite genre to read. I've definitely read dozens and dozens of science fiction novels. But I feel like when I talk to a true sci-fi reader, I'm not very well versed. But just growing up, I saw the Star Wars movies uh, and played video games like Star Wars X-Wing and Wing Commander. Um, I've even read some of the Wing Commander books. So I guess I've read quite a bit of sci-fi. But all that to say is if I were to go looking for a sci-fi book that would like hit all the sweet spots for me, adventure, just intrigue and a richness to the story and the world, this would be it. So check it out. This is only book one of the Void Wraith saga. So if you like it, and I know you will, there's more to read in the series and a lot more great fiction from Chris Fox. If you missed it, right now it's just the early part of November, so we just had Halloween. And I wrote a brand new short story called The Night the Lights Came On, which you can listen to the audio version for free. It's just the last episode in this podcast. You can also check it out on YouTube. And if you like it, I would love it if you would buy a copy of the ebook. It's only $2.99 and leave a review on Amazon. I think you're really going to like it. I had a ton of fun writing it and narrating it. The Night the Lights Came On. It's a spooky short story about a guy who discovers that the creepy old abandoned mansion in the woods behind his house is glowing with bright lights from inside, and he and a buddy go inside to find out just what is going on here. It was so great to write fiction again for the first time in years, at least to write fiction where I finished a story. <laughs> Before I let you go, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about why I'm excited for this podcast as I continue. So this podcast is a book review podcast, but when we get to episode 100, I'm going to start going through this amazing list that is curated from, I think, eight lists that are 100 books to read before you die. And so the cream of the crop from all of those lists made it into this one list that I'm going to start reading through and review. But 
I want it to also be more like a book club, maybe a virtual book club that you can tune into. I'm still going to be diligent about not having spoilers in the episodes, but I think it will have a review, but then also I found some great book club questions like... Would you recommend this book to someone, why or why not, or with what caveats, what kind of reader would most enjoy this book? I have 12 questions that I got from How to Run a Good Book Club that I'll be running through as I review the book. So, around episode 100 of this podcast, we're going to start going through 100 books to read before you die. And I'll do my book review as always. But I'm also going to run through these questions like we're sitting down at a coffee shop having a chat about this book like we're in a book club together. I think it will be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to read the books on this list. I've read quite a few of them already, but I'm going to reread them just to refresh them in my mind. And I can't wait to make it through this list of books and to have something in my life encouraging me to read more and to be excited about what I'm reading next. So I hope that this podcast does that for you. And until next time, happy reading. This podcast is brought to you by dandantheartman.com, where you can find more book reviews, entries on Dan's writing journey, and links to purchase Dan's books, like Haunted House Flipper or The Case of the Missing Snowman. Music by Dan Absalonson.